Hello there. Um, okay, so in the previous videos, what um, I've introduced to you the book by Gustavo Maroni. Uh, we've looked at pedigree analysis. I think there's also one video uh, I did on uh, the difference between fingerprinting and profiling. Um, this this will all lead to uh, the topic that we are going to study, which is the, if you look back at your course contents, uh, we are here. I'm, I'm in the process of preparing you a study guide. Um, uh, it should be very, very soon. So we are here now, genetic mapping of the human genome. So the topic of genetic mapping, um, identification of uh, human disease genes, uh, linkage analysis, they are all intermixed. Uh, so um, so we are going to take bits and pieces and perhaps towards the end we'll just gel them together. Right? So as I said, um, we have, have uh, described uh, pedigree analysis. I have uh, talked about uh, fingerprinting. And in this video, I'm going to talk about uh, the, the importance of um, using markers. So I've uploaded this document. It's just a, a simple exercise. Uh, it has three pictures. So let's just look at the first one. All right. Uh, look at the first one. Now I'll just make this smaller so we don't get confused and I will close that. All right. So look at this picture. The Here you have presumably a couple, four couples. You've got the first couple, second couple, third couple and the fourth couple. And then you have this baby right it's just a theoretical um, situation now in this baby you need to determine who is who are the parents for these babies now uh, you have chosen to look at four different chromosomes well um, yeah you, you look at the blue homolog and then you've got the x and the y so um, but from this picture you can't really tell much because they're all the same as as is the situation if you are trying to do um, uh, say cytogenetic studies um, I mean my bending pattern and your bending pattern we would expect things to be the same um, but bearing in mind that uh, you know when, when people say between humans between you and I the the, the DNA the difference in, in, in or genetic difference is only about uh, 0 0.1 uh, you and I share 99.9% uh, similarities. Some will go even further, 99.99% similarity. So, um, so don't get confused. Don't get misled by that fact because thinking, oh, it's only 1%, so you can't really tell the difference. But when you look at the genome of uh, haploid genome of 3 billion bases, 0.1% makes about 300 million so if you're talking about 0.01 to 0.1% difference, you are actually talking between 30 to 300 million bases that are different between you and me. So there's still a lot of difference. So that's key to using DNA for identification purposes. So in this case, again, so if you, but, but you need to know where to look. If you look at the chromosome as a whole, you won't be able to see it. You'll see, uh, yeah, you, you can tell the difference uh, that this, uh, kid has got um, um, X and Y uh, male, but you know there's no way to to, to determine. So then, then that's where we start to use markers. What are markers? Markers are landmarks along the chromosomes uh, that is used uh, to determine the location. That's a marker. I, I used uh, the analogy of having the milestones in the highway, right? So each milestone must be unique so that it is a point of reference that is unique for that location so that's a marker but what's also important is that these markers must be very variable now let's look variability depends some markers are not variable some are some are very variable so in identity uh, testing a human adaptation system you choose markers that are very variable now i'm just going to give you examples so in this one right you look you just look at the chromosomes you cannot see the difference right now uh looking at the second one okay this second picture, there is some variability. Uh, we just decided to look at the, the blue chromosomes, 
right? And then when we decided, when we looked at the blue chromosomes, we can actually say that, oh, actually, uh, one can be colored red and one can be colored green. And then you look at the individuals, yes, indeed, you'll find that within the eight individuals, uh, there are green, there are blue, and there are even purple, right? So when, so then you start comparing, and uh, we know that this baby will be receiving one chromosome from a mother and one chromosome from the father. Yes, of course, they are couples, but we'll treat them as individuals. So this can come from that, or this red one can come from that. Mm, so you can see that there's a lot of possibilities. Why? Because even though there is a very, there, there are variabilities within chromosomes, they are still not enough. You can exclude, for example, this lady in brown or red, you know, dress. You can exclude because she definitely did, does not have the red or green chromosome. So she's definitely not the parent, right? You can do exclusion. But inclusion-wise, they're still, um, you know, for this red, well, you, you can say that this old lady cannot be the mother, but I can argue, but if, if you think that, you know, the, she doesn't have the red, but she only needs to pass one chromosome, so she can still pass the green, so she, there is a possibility that she is still the, is the mother, right? In fact, looking at this one, perhaps this two is the parent, right? But it's just that the fact that uh, for the purpose of inclusion, you can, but you cannot exclude the others. You can only exclude one, you cannot exclude exclude her as the mother, you cannot exclude her as the father, you cannot exclude anybody else, all right? This is, in genetic terms, what we say as uninformative. Later, when we look at uh, chromosome variation for mapping, you will come, in, uh, uh, you come across this term, uninformative meiosis. Why? Because this is not enough to tell you definitively that uh, this is the parent. Then we come on, we look at uh, the third picture. Now here, all right, uh, we're still using the same, but now we, we, we add in further differences and we manage to characterize the type of X and the type of Y, all right? So now, instead of just looking at one pair of chromosomes, we are now looking at two pairs. So we are looking at that chromosome, we're looking at the sex chromosome, and now you can see that the Y and because the Y is so variable, there are four individuals, you'll find that uh, uh, this guy has this type of Y, this guy has that type of Y, this guy has that type of Y, and this guy has that type of Y. And there's only one match because of the variability. So that makes him quite a definitive uh, evidence as the father. And what about the X? The X could be, well, she is not the mother. This could be the mother. Uh, well, we have ruled her out because she doesn't provide the, uh, the either the green or the red. Uh, oh, okay. I think we are quite definite here that she is the mother. So, in actual fact now, when you look at genetic studies, um, you will find that the actual parent for this baby is that guy with the beard and that uh, lady in, um, well, this, this, this dark haired uh, lady with spectacles, okay? I mean, it fits, isn't it? So you have the green, she will provide the green and the X, he will provide the red and the Y. And it doesn't match the rest. If you can find other matches, please let me know. Okay. So now this is possible because now you're not just looking at one pair of chromosomes. You're also looking at uh, the green and red, and also the X and Y. So in human identification systems, that's what you do. You just, you just don't look at one locus. You look at thirteen. I mean, for if, if you if you follow the FBI under the uh, CODIS. Uh, you remember the codes, the combined uh, DNA index system? They are looking at 13 different lockers. In fact, there are systems that looks at 21 different lockers for human identification. And only if there is a direct match in all 13 or you know more loci, then you can uh, confidently say that um, you know, this goes back to the, remember the previous slide, it says that the chances of a match with all this 13 plus at NY is about 1 in what, 7.7, 7, 10 times to the power of 15. 
that that's the chance so this is how you 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 do um, identification in in humans using DNA variation why is this important because we are going to relate that with studies in chromosomes later when we want to see the um, <laughs> when we want to see the inheritance of chromosomes you need to be able to differentiate which chromosomes comes from which parent and which is being so we, we are, hopefully uh, with this understanding you will appreciate uh, linkage analysis later all right okay i'll see you in the next video then